September 11, 2001 started out like pretty much any day would. You know, aside from the tragedy, it is most memorable for some of the most gorgeous late summer weather one could imagine. The morning was, was unfolding um, in a really brilliant way. Uh, my wife, she was on her way to work when uh, she called me to say, hey, there's a report on the news of an airplane uh, that struck the World Trade Center. I turned on the television in my office and saw the silhouette of the airplane in the North Tower and immediately recognized it as an intentional event, as an intentional act. I soon after got a phone call from our emergency communication center, the director, uh, Steve Souter. I had asked him at the time to um, put a radio report out for the fire department to get all of our resources back in their, in their normal response areas. Send an immediate page to the fire department group recalling all chief officers and all captains at the Fairlington Training Center. Have them all report to fire station number nine and await instructions. As units were being returned to their normal area, uh, one of our engines, engine 101, was under the command of Captain Steve McCoy. He was leaving our training academy and was headed up uh, Interstate 395. Engine 101, fog, go down. Engine 101, fog, go down. Direct. Engine 101, did it crash over there in the Pentagon? Is that correct? Engine 161 to Arlington. Have you been advised of the aircraft hitting the Pentagon? Engine Hill Steve reported it going down in the vicinity of the 14th Street Bridge and that ECC should immediately notify the FBI. Engine 101. Hey, did you need to contact the FBI? Okay, all units responding over to the Pentagon. You need to be careful, possible uh, terrorist attack. Build a uh, plane into the building. His radio report to notify the FBI was also very illustrative of the way we had begun developing relationships with some of our non-traditional partners, the FBI being one of them. In fact, on September 8th, um, the FBI had participated in a regional exercise that was conducted in Fairfax County. The, the, the exercise was, was about a chemical event, but all of the same players that responded to the Pentagon participated in that exercise three days before. My response to the Pentagon began when, um, when, when these radio reports began to come in. I was in the Courthouse Plaza building and made an immediate uh, beeline for the Pentagon where I uh, met Battalion Chief Bob Cornwell who had arrived a few minutes before. Bob was such a trusted and almost an iconic figure in the fire department. And I knew he was the one that I first wanted to lead our, our people into the Pentagon. One of our primary roles uh, on any response is to bring order out of the perceived chaos. And on an event as large as 9-11, it's not perceived. There is, a, there is a real chaos going on. There are thousands of people streaming out of the building. Some of the most heroic efforts performed that day made by people who worked in the Pentagon, both military and civilian, who recognized that some of their comrades, some of their, um, you know, the, the people that they worked with um, were not getting out of the building or needed assistance to get out of the building. And so many were going in and out to try and assist in that effort.
I did not go home until 10 p.m. on September 12th. And I had not slept for the entire, I hadn't slept since I got up on the morning of September 11th. I remember waking up, um, I think it was on the morning of September 13th, um, and at a, I, my, I'd gotten into, routine, into a routine of sleeping until about 4 a.m., going home around 10, sleeping until about 4, getting up in the morning, driving back to the Pentagon, walking the camp, um, and then checking in a command and taking over for my 12-hour work period. And I remember getting in the car, I think it was on the morning of September 13th, it might have been the 14th, and turning on the radio and hearing on the news that Major League Baseball had decided they were going to start playing games again that weekend. And I thought, at listening to that, I was so completely dislocated from what was going on in the rest of the world. 9-11 Commission said in their uh, report that while no emergency response is flawless, the response to the 9-11 attack on the Pentagon be, can be considered a success for three reasons. One, the relationships and trust that existed between the responders. Two, the uh, adoption of the incident command system, which has now been nationalized in, in a kind of a doctrine. And the third reason was the commitment to a regional approach to providing emergency response. And those three elements um, have really, I think, been um, a, really a model for how the rest of the nation has looked to see how to better prepare for all kinds of emergencies. You know, they are moment, there are so many moments that, um, you know, make me intensely proud about how the fire department, how all of public safety, how this county performed. You know, when you think about our size, um, that was but one example of how we punched way above our weight, how we demonstrated to, I think, the world that even a jurisdiction as metropolitan, as urban as ours, but as, again, with very constrained resources, can perform when faced with a national or international crisis um, in a way that demonstrated real leadership and, and ways that others can learn from.